Hi, and welcome to the last winter webinar series. I'm Andrew Moore from Clubs Tasmania. Our role is to strengthen the community club industry. Joining me today is Brett Stubbs, who is the sports editor at the Mercury newspaper. Welcome, Brett. G'day, Andrew. Thanks for having me. That's great. Hey, thank you so much for giving up your time today. We're going to really, the topic for us is that we're going to talk about um, how community clubs can engage with their media yep. um, across the state. And obviously we might talk about um, that from a regional level where there are there may be community newspapers and then obviously in the larger cities um, where there's the Advocate, the Examiner and the, and the Mercury. So before we start, let's let's hear a little bit about Brett Stubbs and then, yeah, have you been a member of a community club or? Yeah, I played uh, a lot of cricket at the Kimmerer District Cricket Club. I'm a playing life member there until work took over. So I, yeah, cricket was my my passion as a, as a junior. Um, played a bit of footy as well, very, very unsuccessfully. <laughs> a bit showing my age, I played a few games for the Sandy Bays in the, in the underage competitions there. Um, yeah, but uh, grew up in Kingston Blackman's Bay and the Kingston High School and Hobart College. So played a lot of you know, school sports and community sports around there. And tell us about, um, if you're thinking back, I know you're in your 40s, Brett, we won't ask you too much <laughs> about your date of birth, but like, tell us a little bit about some of those experiences that you can remember from the community club perspective and maybe was there a volunteer that you remember or a coach or what was that experience like, say, either in cricket or footy? Well, in my, even in my job now, the, the network I created at community clubs, I still use now. These are people who have got, who I come through playing junior cricket with now who got into do different areas that become professionals in the, either in sport or out of sport. Um, but those connections are, I made through sport, I still use now for contacts, for, for information, for story ideas, to find out what's going on. And it's been invaluable in what I've done, and not just even professionally, but also you know, in life, you make lifelong friends. I've still got so many friends that I've played cricket with and played football with that, um, yeah, it's, a, it's such, a, um, such a terrific resource for, Career and for uh, for outside your career as well, and you know that the you know, that's that's probably an example across Tasmania is that you know they say six degrees of separation was probably two in Tassie. Yeah, you know you, you'll know somebody you either went to school with or you've played sport with, and one of the catchphrases I know we use across the community club industry is that you know the reason that the government has been so um, keen to fund um, initiatives that say we've, we've advocated for is that because clubs keep communities connected. It's the role they play. It's where Brett Stubbs or Andrew Moore can go down and, and feel like they belong with their local cricket club or their football club. We can go and volunteer. We can be a coach. We can we can fill any of those roles. And so yes, it's the role of the, of the community club and the volunteer across the state it again has that impact on our community. So yeah, yeah, that's right. And being part of the team, I think, is you know, team sports is such a such a vital part of growing up. You know being working for others, um, you know, doing your role to, to help the team for the greater good. I think that's invaluable for a young person coming through and community clubs play such a vital role in, in those, um, yeah, in the development of, of children to, to young adults and into adulthood. Yeah, and I guess we saw yesterday in the news, which you reported on notice yesterday, was at the elite level with there's been a cut in, in, in obviously funding through to AFL TAS, but all, all peak bodies will probably have a cut. But the impact then, grassroots is still important, whether that's at Mount Pleasant Cricket Club or Swansea Footy Club or Straw and Golf Club or um, Forest Stanley up in the northwest. The, those community clubs are the fabric of, of those communities. So. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, the, we've seen the impact at the elite level and unfortunately that's going to filter down. Um, you know, I think, I think as we discussed previously, you know, it's going to get harder for community clubs, but they're going to play an even more important role, I think, in, you know, for tough times as, as people are impacted by the COVID crisis, whether it be through employment or personal circumstances, that to have a club to fall back on, to, to feel connected to, to be a part of is, is even going to be more important in this current situation. Yeah, and look, I mean, I was reading some research a couple of weeks ago, but the, the role of communities and neighbourhoods um, it, during the COVID until we come out, which could be 12 to 18 months until they find that uh, find the solution. Um, yeah, as I said, the role that the community clubs are going to play is, is more important. So look, tell us a little bit about newspapers then. Now, the forum today um, is really around how can a community club, wherever they're situated across Tassie, how can they 
um, engage with their local media. Now, as I said, whether that's the East and Shore Sun, uh, the Mercury, the Advocate, tell us a little bit about newspapers and how they can they can go about that process, what they need to do. Yeah, over to you. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about my role. So I'm the sports editor at the Mercury. Um, I have, you know, there's some reporters who obviously report back to me and we discuss what's going to go in the paper the next day. Also, just as important these days, what goes online. Um, it's such a big platform and uh, people, you know, need instant news these days. They want to know what's going on. Um, so, but one of my jobs is to decide what's going in the paper and where it goes. Um, I say, you know, work with the editor if it's if it's a big story that can go up front, you know, it could be a you know story about like the NBL team being announced or what's happening with the redevelopment of the deck that's that has a general interest that is not just sport. Um, yeah, so my role is to liaise with um, contributors, reporters, photographers to to get the best product we can in the paper. Um, what I would suggest to all clubs out there is, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to your local paper. You know, whether that's picking up the phone or sending an email. Um, we're always looking for good content. You know, we, I'm not going to guarantee that every time you send it an email, you're going to get a story. But if you don't send it in and we don't know about it, well, then you definitely might get a story. So if you approach your local media or, or us, you know, via email or phone and, you know, put what you think is a, an interesting story or might be a milestone or might be someone who's played golf at one club for 50 years and got their first hole in one. You know, that could be a terrific local, little local story, a picture of this person who's been a, a long time member who's got their first ever hole in one. People love those stories, you know, the human interest stories. They, you know, people know people in Tasmania. They, they, they will identify that will be that that person who got the hole in one, someone will know them as you talked about the degrees of separation. Um, so if it's the talk of the club, if it's, if it's something that you think, wow, that's an interesting story, reach, reach out. Send an email, get on the phone, just just have a chat. You know, they, it might be depending on what's happening that day. It might be something that that that, that the media organisation can grasp and get a photo and do the story on, or it might be something that we follow up in a couple of days, just depending on what's going. But if you don't reach out um, and we don't know about these stories and what's happening in your community, then then we can't publish it. So that so that would be my suggestion is to just reach out if you've got an idea. So look, there we go, listeners. We've got an open invitation from Brett Stubbs and the Mercury, and I'm sure he would represent across all the newspapers across the state. Get in contact if you've got an idea or a story. What's the best way for uh, for community clubs to do that? Can they get that information from the paper or online, or can yeah, you yeah. share with us an email address now where they yeah. might send that to? Uh, Mercury.sport at the Mercury, or one word, .com .au. Um, That goes to the sports desk team. Um, you know, we have a different email address for sports results as well. We always try to get as many sports results in as we can. But if you're pitching a story idea, I would send it to the, the Mercury um, email. Just put in as much detail as possible. Um, you know, what, why, why is this story interesting to you? You know, just um, put a contact name and a contact details. Um, but basically pitch your stories. Why is it interesting? You know, it might be the whole in one example that we used or someone who's chalked up, you know, uh, 500 games they played there the whole career, you know, something a bit different, but something that is interesting to a wider readership or um, your local community. Um, yeah, reach out to us. We're always open to ideas. That's, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what newspapers and media organisations do. They tell people stories. So if you've got a story to tell, come and tell us and hopefully we can help you tell that story to a wider audience. And again, there'll be help there on the other end that even though you, you might not be the best writer or story yep. write, writer, you'll help knock the edges off that story and um, again arrange for a photograph or something. To yeah, that's right. We'll take over from there. We can do the interviews. Uh, we can put it together. Um, yeah, but like I said, reach out and tell us what's going on in your club and in your community. All right. And you talked before about the newspaper, so the print version and then the online version. Um, did I hear correctly there that there is a difference in the, in the editions? Yeah, so um, what happens these days is equal, before the print was king and that was our main focus, but now it's both uh, uh, equally valuable. So um, online will roll during the day as the news changes. Uh, for example, yesterday we had the uh, change of the day for Tasmania. Uh, that was done first thing in the morning. So we 
do a quick story telling what's immediately happened, then we follow up during the day. Then the next day's paper is the stories of Ben. So reaction to the changes at AFL Tasmania, what that means. Um, yeah, so that's the difference. So um, online is immediate and, um, you know, currently what's going on, um, it's normally shorter, hard, faster. And the next day is reaction, um, what's happening, how people have dealt with it and what it means going forward. Okay, and so look, we'll, we'll put this webinar up probably towards the end of the week, Brett. Um, mm -hmm. And as I said, uh, hopefully those uh, stories will come flooding in. Mm -hmm. Any other advice you've got for community clubs, whether it be print media or maybe um, in terms of how they promote their product or the stories? I know that social media and digital channels are a, a yep. massive uh, resource for community clubs to sell their message. What about um, yeah, helping some of those clubs craft those stories? You talked before about um, yeah, make it a story. Yep, that's right. We you look at things like um, you know Facebook and Twitter, and this probably goes against our own setup as a business, but they they are publishing platforms. You know you can use those to reach out to your uh, community. You can put photos if they're instant. Um, you have control over that. Um, what we can do those help you take it to a wider audience. Um, you know, your Facebook site, community club, not only, you know, be your your club might be the only one following it, but if you take it to us, we can take it to a much broader um, section of the community. But they're, they're instant publishing platforms. You can get your ideas, you can give updates on what's happening, changes to functions, cancellations, team selections, injuries, or you can do that on your Facebook and even Twitter or, um, you know, and and they do have um, they do have impact for community clubs if you do it properly. If you have someone who can put the time into it, and um, they are very valuable tools for community uh, clubs and organisations. All right, and just as I said, for those listening to the webinar, what we'll do over the next couple of days is we'll put together a little directory of um, the, the email addresses and the contact numbers for the regional newspapers as well as the, the city one, so the Examiner, the Advocate and the Mercury, as well as the Signal or Gazette or Funny Times. So that if you are in a regional area, that we've, you've got those details and we'll add those across our uh, website and also our Facebook page. So that community clubs, for instance, in, in the North East or if you're at the East Coast, Swans, you know where to, where to send your story. Okay, um, and just in terms of passing, what does the future hold for newspapers, Brett? Um, tell us what, what newspapers are going to look like in 12 months and then in, in four years' time. You got any ideas or hunches? Oh, that's a, it's a million dollar question at the moment. Like our, our industry has gone through a lot of changes, um, we've been impacted by Twitter and Facebook and Google and all those things. Um, yeah, newspapers will continue to evolve, I think. Uh, um, Certainly the online presence will be a major focus. Um, you know, as people get more used to picking up their phone or their tablet to getting information rather than a newspaper, um, you know, we'll see a generational shift there. Um, you know, at the moment, Tasmanians still love their newspaper, which is a great thing. You know, I still love reading a newspaper as well, having that physical form in my hand and turning the pages. Um, but a lot of people want their news updated and instant. They want it on their phone, whether they're commuting or in their lunch break or um, on a weekend, they just want to find out what's going on. So definitely, um, yeah, online it will become more and more important and a major focus. And you know, when, where once upon a time you were a print newspaper and newspaper only, now you have to have more skills. You have to be able to do a video, take a photo, um, do an interview online, um, you know, these kind of things that that just that people want. They just sometimes they just don't want text, they want they want to see the video, they want to see an amazing photo. So yeah, newspapers are evolving fast, but the but the most important thing about newspapers is still having that connection with the community, being able to tell the community story. So it doesn't matter what the platform is, if you don't have that connection with the community, if you haven't got the engagement with the community. Um, it's going to be very, very tough. So unless you have that, you know, like they said, that connection, or you're getting feedback from your community, getting story ideas from your community. Um, and oh, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention is about when talking about communities and newspapers. It, the media can help you if you're in a situation where you are in a clash with a council or um, 
you know, you're struggling for volunteers or finances or, you know, a club that's been around for a hundred years might be really struggling for volunteers or might be able to shut its doors because the finances, well, reach out, tell your, tell your local media and that can be sent out to your community. You never know who's going to read that story and come to your aid or come with financial assistance or it could put pressure on the council or, you know, any of these things, if you're proactive and get on the front foot, it can really help your community club in a, in a tight situation. Yeah, man, we might also throw in there the Clubs Tasmania, we're funded by the government, but our core role is as an advocacy body for the community club industry that covers community clubs, sporting clubs and RSLs. Yeah. So again, if you're not confident enough to maybe reach out to Brett or somebody in your regional area with a newspaper at, say, the Examiner or the Eastern Shore Sun, get in contact with us. You can ring us on our toll-free number, which is 1300. 125827, or you could send me an email, andrew at tha.asn.au. And Brett's correct, as I said, if, you, if your change rooms are falling down or, or your team's got no um, running water for the showers or whatever, you know, we, we, we're happy to support that. And, and, and you can see over the last 18 months with about $24 million that's flowed from the government into the community club industry with Ticket to Play, levelling the playing field, improving the playing field and the $3,000 sports grants. They're all um, funding streams that we've advocated for the government so that they can go back into the community club industry. So generating a media story is no different, Brett. That's yep. exactly what you want to hear about the good, the bad and the ugly. Yep, that's right. Yeah, be proactive, get on the front foot, um, you know, get your story out there. You never know what might happen, who's going to read it, what pressure is going to come from getting some publicity to your, for your club. Okay, so the challenge has been thrown out there from Brett and the rest of the media. Um, yeah, get on the phones, get on the emails and send in your stories. Um, that's the last of our winter webinar series for uh, our, this particular season. Um, stay tuned though, as I said, uh, coming up starting next month is a um, half hour podcast, which will be called All Things Tassie Sport, that will be running um, the first Wednesday of every month, and we also have a 10 minute slot on a weekly radio show on RSN. So stay tuned for more information around that. But until then, Brett Stubbs, thank you very much for giving us some time and helping the community club industry understand about what's required and how they can pitch a, a story to the, to the local media. We do appreciate your time. And until next time, bye for now.